Good morning, YouTube. Welcome to the Reptile Barn. I uh, wanted to do a quick video for you about a topic that was requested. As you can see, it is winter. We're in Alaska. It's cold. Somebody wanted to know how do we climate control our feeders? Okay, which is a great topic, I think. So we'll just do a really quick video about this um, to honor that request and for anyone's information who lives in a cold climate. So the first answer is, it depends. Uh, we keep rabbits and quail that, believe it or not, at least here in Anchorage, where it's a little bit more mild than like the interior of the state, uh, we don't climate control at all. We just give them supplemental light during the winter months where the daylight is a lot shorter, you know, the photo period. And they do great. Obviously, uh, the baby quail, we incubate, and then we put them in a brooder, and then we have a secondary brooder for, uh, you know, up until about six weeks old when they have all their feathers in and everything, they can't handle the cold. Um, certainly not this kind of cold. But uh, once they're adults, they do great. They pop out eggs all, all winter long. They're awesome. So let me show you the inside of that shed. Uh, by the way, these are just, uh, you know, Home Depot kit type sheds. So we keep our rabbits and our quail in here with no extra heat. Although, cool fact, uh, during the summer, we keep the floor a lot cleaner. But during the winter, we use a deep litter method. I'm gonna talk really loud because there's a fan on and uh, for the carbon filter just to keep the air quality good in here. Um, so there's probably eight to 10 inches of straw and hay and all sorts of stuff down at the bottom of this. Uh, and we dig it up all winter long and we put it over here in a pile and it composts all winter long, believe it or not. And it produces a, quite a bit of heat, okay? So we, right now, we're just running one trio of rabbits. Here's the male, our buck, and there's one of the does and there's another one somewhere. Um, we're not using most of the slots in our hutch right now, although we do have quail in one, in one of the uh, areas of the hutch. So uh, yeah, and they do great. Anyway, so it's real simple for these guys. This is one of those heated waterers, uh, so the water doesn't freeze. Um, we insulated somewhat, although you can see it's not spectacularly done right now. We actually, believe it or not, another fun fact living in Alaska, we had, sorry, weird light. Let me go back outside. We had a massive earthquake. Um, let's see, how long ago was that? Two years ago now? And uh, it, I mean, it, it blasted us. <laughs> and it shook all the insulation out. People were having roofs collapse. Uh, it, was a, it was a big one. So, uh, it, when we first put these sheds in for our feeders, you know, years ago, uh, the insulation was perfect. But uh, ever since that earthquake, we've just kind of done patch jobs. We've never just torn it all out and redone it, which is what we need to do, but we haven't. So, it's not as great as it should be. But yeah, we use a lot of insulation on these sheds. We run big old carbon filters to keep the air quality really nice in there. Um, Cause you know, it's a lot of animals. There's not a ton of animals in that one, but in the, in the rodent shed, there's a lot. So let me show you that one. This one is heavily insulated because we want this one to stay really warm. Let me show you this setup here. All the walls, ceiling, floor, everything heavily, heavily insulated, okay? Um, and as you can see, it is 73 degrees in here right now. Uh, it doesn't have to stay that hot. Um, you know, the mice, the mice are tough as nails. They can get down into the low 60s and they're absolutely fine. Um, they, they really truly, uh, they're fine in the 60s. But, you know, it's not a particularly bad cold snap right now. So what we have here, we have a space heater. Um, and it's worth getting a space heater with like a filter that you can take out and clean out so you can you know, preserve the life of the space heater. But even that 
being said, <clears throat> it's still worth buying a new space heater every year or two. Uh, they just slow down because of the, you know, the dust and everything from the bedding and uh, the, just, it slows down. It's a small space. Um, but yeah, we have a fan on the ground so that we don't end up having, you know, 75 degree air up here at the ceiling and 55 degree air down there at the ground, which is what would happen without a fan. Um, and uh, I'll bet we have four to eight inches of insulation lining every everything walls ceiling even the floor we have uh you know straw um we we do our best to insulate and we have you know some of the the rigid insulation on the ground as well um, the light is making it look like it's dim in here it is not dim in here at all i'm not sure why it's doing that maybe it's just because it's shining so brightly on my face it's actually uh remarkably well lit in here that yeah that's more what it looks like um so yeah we have a little staging area store all of our Missouri rodent block over here, some random equipment. There's an old space heater. Um, yeah, big old water tub with a pump so that it's easy to uh, refill their water reservoirs. And you know, this is one of those nice ARS racks. So uh, it's all plumbed. Um, here's some mice. Hi guys. Hi guys. We use a lot of toilet paper and uh, uh, paper towel rolls just for, you know, enrichment. Let them chew, let them tunnel, um, and they love them. They, they go crazy for these things. But yeah, uh, real simple. This rack, by the way, this is one that we built ourselves. This is the first rack we ever built, and it is still going strong. We plumbed it ourselves, as you can see. Um, much, much larger tubs than, than the ARS rack or, or your typical mouse rack. Um, and I like it. And then the ARS rack, we run a trio. Uh, one thing about mice that we've, that we've discovered, they are happier together. They do not like being apart. So we never have, you know, like a lone male off on his own or anything like that. Um, they just, they are meant to be a social species, so we let them be. Um, we just keep them in trios all the time. We don't separate off pregnant moms. We let them raise their babies together, nurse together, uh, much more naturally how they would, you know, how wild mice are, uh, where they live in colonies, right? The dads never, ever pick on the babies. Um, <clears throat> when there's two females in there instead of just one, she doesn't get overbred. Another thing we have noticed, and we actually learned this from the rabbits, um, when you keep them in a colony, uh, you know, just to all together all the time, they regulate their own breeding a little bit better. So you don't end up having a new litter every three weeks, uh, which would just wear the females out badly. It'd be bad for their health. They'd last way less time, have fewer babies. It's just not, you know, as healthy for them. These are feeders, but we still need to treat them right. Um, and I know there's people out there that they see our, you know, uh, uh, mouse breeder rack. Like, you're torturing your mice. Well, you know, I disagree. Um, I'm not out here to offend anybody, but we believe that um, giving them constant things to chew on, very, very high quality food, constant companionship, not being overbred. These are, these are steps we can take to treat our rodents very, very well. Um, and, you know, the occasional treats, you know, chicken bones and things like that. Um, and they do great very healthy colony they're kept uh, again we have a, a massive carbon filter in here to uh, keep the air quality really good um, I'm asthmatic so I can't be in here if it's you know if there's like if we haven't cleaned tubs in you know four or five days or something like that uh, and so there's like that ammonia smell I just I get killed I can't even be in here so the tubs are, are scrubbed out every like three days new bedding um, and they do awesome. Our mouse colony rocks. They, they really, really save us a lot of money. Um, you know, when it's baby ball python season, like right now, and we're going through, I don't even know, 60, 70, 80 mice a week, that would just kill us if we had to purchase all those. Um, so breeding ourselves is, is massively helpful to our business. 
Um, it also allows us to always have the exact proper size um, where, you know, you go to the pet store and generally there's just like small adults and that's it. Uh, we can have pinky, fuzzy, hopper, small, large, jumbo, doesn't matter. Um, it also means that uh, we're not dependent on the large rodent producers. Um, you know, if they go out of stock, some people are just out of luck. <laughs> um, whereas we have our constant supply. Um, and, you know, we mostly feed frozen, but there's snakes that just eat better on live or that only eat live. And so it's, it's just nice to have uh, its peace of mind for us. We can provide our, you know, we're not really mouse breeders that sell to the public like crazy, but like especially our customers who've bought snakes from us or people we just know in the community, um, we'll sell them mice. We have some just regular customers that come, you know, once a week get their mouse or every two weeks or whatever it is. And uh, so it's, it's just nice uh, for the business as well um, to save ourselves money on you know the cost of buying them we know what these mice are eating we know how they're kept um, and we're happy with that and then also it's nice to be able to provide them to customers so yeah that's it um, really there's no secret there's absolutely no secret tons and tons and tons of insulation um, use a space heater get a fan get a carbon filter and that's it I mean that's really it don't get a huge space because you're gonna have to heat it right uh, the mice are tough you know we have wild mice here in Alaska um, believe it or not and they they thrive all winter long <laughs> um, you know and Anchorage isn't as cold as the interior but we can get down negative 20 negative 30 maybe on a real bad winter in a bad cold streak so these mice are tough they would be totally fine if we let it get much much colder than this but they wouldn't breed and the whole point of them is to provide food and for them to be as healthy and perfect as possible we don't want them burning through all their calories just staying warm right um, anyways that is all I hope that that was uh, informational uh, to anyone who's thinking about doing it financially 100% worth it um, if you can't handle the smell of rodents no matter how clean you keep them no matter how much uh, you filter the air there's gonna be a smell so I wouldn't do this in my house, um, but if you have a sensitive nose and, and you get nauseous easily, maybe this is not for you. Uh, <laughs> but uh, otherwise, we love it. And and you know my brother mostly does does the the feeders, and uh, he cranks through the work. He's he's a machine, but uh, he likes it. He likes working with the mice. He keeps. I don't know. Uh, if you can see all the different colors we've slowly expanded our mousery to all these different colors and patterns and stuff that's not even a particularly exciting tub but uh, we like it anyway that's all I've got thank you guys so much for watching I hope that you can hear me over the sound of the fan um, probably should have turned it off but I didn't so till next time we're the reptile barn Thank you.